This video will demonstrate tying a two color headband with a bead on the edge. This is one of the most common uh, headbands, a single core construction used on leather bindings. There are variations on how to uh, sew this headband, but what I'm going to demonstrate is how I was taught. Here you can see an uncovered book and you can see the core sticking out either side of the headband and you could see the tie downs into the spine of the book. The most common reference on headbands is the Greenfield book. It covers a lot of uh, very interesting and intricate headbands. Uh, this headband is the first one in the book. It's in a third edition now. I normally use silk, this particular silk, which is a heavier, I think it's like a buttonhole silk. Uh, I get it from Hewitt's in the UK, uh, but it is a bit hard to get, a bit expensive if you import it. And it's very hard to video. Uh, this crochet um, thread is good as well, but it's a bit coarse. Uh, I don't sort of like it, I've tried it. What I'm going to use in this video is coloured linen thread just because it, it stands out well in the video but it is a little bit coarse and you can sort of see the wraps on the thread th of the thread which is fine for some headbands. I'm going to use this flax beading twine for the core. Again I got this from Hewitt's. It's round. Traditionally vellum and leather laminated together are often used as the core which is not round. I'm going to use, start by demonstrating on a, a demonstration block and I encourage everyone to start with something like this. Just get an old book and uh, a, a perfect bound book. Something without shoulders. Uh, I think you should start on a book without shoulders. The first thing I did was to go through and flag the center of each section. Now this book doesn't have sections so I just estimated where the center would be. And now I've got the two colors of twine that I'm going to use. I'm going to tie down with red so theoretically the red should be a bit longer. Uh, about 12 to 18 inches. You want it as short as possible because you don't the extra uh, thread flopping around is a bit of a pain in the neck. So 14 inches for this short uh, headband should be fine. Now I've tied an overhand knot and just tidied that up at the end. And now I'll thread a needle on each thread. Now I'm only going to tie down on the coloured red thread. So I don't really need a needle on the white thread. But I like a needle on the thread just for the white uh, so it sort of weighs the thread down, it helps keep it out of the way. Some of the more complex headbands, the needle gets in the way. Now the black line represents where the kettle stitches would be. And some people like to go uh, in below the kettle stitches. For the first to start, you go through the hole of the kettle stitch. So I've gone through where the kettle stitch would have been. And so you can see the knot on the inside. That would be the inside of the first section. Now I bring that thread back around and go through the same hole again to produce a loop of the red thread, which would be thread A in Greenfield's book. So I've got that done. Now I'll put the book into the press. Now some people have it put it in the press with the spine facing them. I think most people do it with the spine facing away. I do it with the spine facing away. Now I'll cut my piece of core and put it inside that loop of red thread. I'm going to put it on the top edge of the book. So I'll just have it extending maybe a little bit less than an inch either side of the edge of the book. So I'm going to put that through that loop and put it up on the top of the spine, sitting on the top of the text block. I'm going to pull that loop tight and then I'm going to wrap the white thread around to lock it in place. So here we go with the white thread. We'll lock, wrap it around once so it's back to the front and that locks it in place. 
In this first demonstration, I'm going to alternate two wraps of each color around the core. So I've got one wrap of red around it so far. So now I put a second wrap of red around. So you can see there's two loops of red around the core. And so that's the first um, color done. Now we want to change the white and the red. And we want a white bead in front of the red. So we swap them around. Now the white goes over the red. And this is one of the tricks is keeping the tension even. So normally I'd be looking at the other side and I'd be able to see the bead in front and I would make sure that it was uh, well tensioned. Now we'll do two wraps of the white. Now we'll swap around to the front so you can see. So you can see the white bead in front of the red. And now we'll swap again. So now the red will go over the white. So I'll swap them around, red over white. And I'll adjust the tension so they're nice and even. I'll push the two whites together and I'll, I'll uh, adjust the tension so there's a nice bead now in front of the white. Now I didn't realize it till I started, but the white's actually thicker than the red. So um, that, that affects how even it looks. Now I'll do two wraps with the red and then swap again. Getting started is the hardest part because initially there's only one attachment point, but we'll soon do a second tie down and then everything will become more solid. So now we're doing a swap again. The, uh, I think it was the white over the red. So we've got a white bead in front of the two red wraps. And we'll wrap the white again and then we'll go back to the red and next time we go back to the red we'll do a tie down. And you can see how I push those threads over to keep them together. You don't want them to go over each other. Now because we're only doing two wraps, uh, if you, when you do a tie down you have to do it on the first wrap. So now we're going to bring the red over and we're going to put it down between uh, the sections. So we're going to use the flags to find the closest section uh, that has a center to where we're up to. So that's fairly well lined up. And then we'll push the needle down through the spine. Now some people like to go below the kettle stitch to get the extra strength. And some people go above the kettle stitch. Some people will try and go uh, right through the kettle stitch. Uh, I try to avoid going through the kettle stitch. Uh, and in this case, I'm trying to go just below. So it'll get the extra strength that the, you wouldn't be able to pull up through the kettle stitch. But in a real binding, we would have lined the spine with some light cloth. So it probably wouldn't pull up if you went above the kettle stitch as well. Okay, so now we're just going to repeat this pattern. So we'll add every second set of red wraps will tie down. In this video, I'll demonstrate tying this headband three times. So the first time is this time on the dummy book, which is the best case scenario with no shoulders on the book. Then I'll demonstrate it on a book with shoulders to show the complication of dealing with having the tie downs, having to follow the, the kink in the sections towards the spine, because you don't want to push the needle through the paper away from the spine. And then because this video is a bit misleading and it shows the book being spun around a heap of times, the third time will just be a very sped up demonstration of the book being sewn uh, in a normal situation. So I'll just uh, show what it looks like from the side uh, as I'm working at the bench. There are a number of videos on YouTube already showing how to tie this headband. I think the best one is by um, the Bookbinders Chronicle, though they do a variation of this. They have the knot, the initial knot on the outside of the spine. There's a few other minor differences, uh, but it is uh, really well done and easy to follow. 
Uh, there are a few others that uh, aren't as easy to follow uh, and hopefully mine is a bit easier to follow than those. I'm not an expert on headbands mainly because I don't do the bindings where the more complex ones such as Islamic bindings or Coptic bindings or uh, medieval bindings uh, where they have a primary um, headband and then a secondary headband sewn over the primary headband and also in those cases often the headband is sewn into the boards so the headband is a structural component of the book that supports the sections um, at the uh, head and tail and connects them to the covers or the boards. At some point I will uh, do a video on the two other uh, end bands that I occasionally use uh, which is uh, the single colour uh, with no bead or I think it's also called the single colour with a, a bead on the spine and I very occasionally do a, a, a double core French headband as well which really has three cores but it's known as the double core French. So now we've reached the end so it's time to finish up. Now instead of tying down on the first wrap to finish up you tie down on the second wrap. So I'm just trying to find the center of the section that corresponds to the current position. So I make sure I've got it lined up. So I've wrapped it once already so I'll push it through to complete the second wrap and then I'll bring the white around to the back without taking the red back out to the front. So both threads will end up out the back. In Greenfield's book she suggests that you can tie the two together but I don't like tying the threads together because that produces a knot uh, which is a lump underneath the spine that you have to deal with. Uh, I prefer to just use some adhesive to glue the loose ends of threads to the spine of the book. So that's what I'll do. And while I'm at it, I'll put a little bit of adhesive over the tie downs and a little bit at the junction between the top of the text block and the, uh, and the headband just to consolidate it. Now, the next step will be to line the spine. So I'm going to trim off the the, um, the cores and I'll put a bit of adhesive on each end ends, end of the head, headband to stop them uh, unraveling. In some end band configurations the cores are actually laced into the boards uh, but not in this one. Now I'll demonstrate on an actual book. This book's got the boards laced in already so the boards are attached but they're laced in in such a way that I can move them down so they'll be out of the way. So first thing I'll do is go through and flag the center of uh, all the sections. I won't flag every section towards the center of the book because I'm not going to tie down on every section. It's very German to tie down on every section. A lot of uh, medieval books and uh, early books the headbands are an integral part of the book and provide structural strength to the book um, and that's why there's so many tie downs. The uh, English trade binders in the late 19th century uh, went to the opposite extreme. They took it to the point where they, they were completely decorative so there was as few tie downs as possible because it was all about trying to get the cost down and speed things up. So there might have been the initial tie down and maybe one or two more and then the final one. So it was almost nothing holding the headband on. It was purely decorative. On a backed book with shoulders you don't want the headband to extend much past the edge of the text block. If it does then the head cap, the leather at the top of the spine will push the edges of the headband in and it will sort of crank. So we'll start by um, getting the thread through the 
kettle stitch location for the first section. Now if it's got really wide shoulders you might start on the second section so that you don't avoid that problem that I just mentioned of the head cap pushing the headband in. Now just as before I will tie down with the red only. So I could have made the red thread slightly longer. I can't remember whether I did or not. I'll use the uh, same core material, the uh, flax twine. So I'll get this first loop going, uh, put the book in the uh, finishing press and then put the core in position. Now in the third uh, go, I'll show a little trick that other people use quite commonly. I don't use it very often, though it worked so well uh, when I used it on the third go that I think I might start using it more often. I, in the past I hadn't found it that useful, but uh, uh, this time it worked really well. So I'll put the core in position at the top of the spine, on the top of the book. I'll pull the red loop tight and then I'll bring the yellow around and lock it into position and then I'll do the second wrap of the red. Now in this book I'm going to do wraps of three. So it's a bit faster and plus you've got a bit of flexibility in that you can tie down on the first or the second wrap with the uh, two turns on the core, you've only got the option of tying down on the first wrap. So if you're not quite into the lined up with the section that you want, uh, then, um, then you just have to go for it. So same thing, once I've done the three wraps in this case, uh, swap the front and the back threads with the front thread going over the top. Now I'll do three wraps with the yellow and then swap with the red now going over the top to get the red bead in front of the yellow and then just keep this up until it's time for the first tie down. As I bring the needle up after I've found the center of the section, I'm going to keep the needle fairly vertical until the tip of the needle is in the um, crease at the spine. If I just push the needle through at a low angle, there's a good chance I would go through the page rather than at the crease of the spine. I hope that makes sense. Hopefully by now you've realized that there's really not much to this headband. It, it's fairly simple and really the, the trick is to uh, practice, to get some books, get some paperback books maybe and just uh, practice. The thing is when you bring the, uh, I'll swap the threads from front to back, you want to get the tension just right so that you get that bead sitting nicely at the front. And if it's not, then you can adjust it. You can pull them back and forth until it's sitting nicely. But there's no, uh, there's nothing particularly complex about this one, unlike the, the, the double French, which um, I have to look up every single time I go to do it, because I always forget how to do it.
And for the final colour, the tie down is on the third wrap. And just as before, I'm just going to use some PVA to glue the ends of the threads down. I have seen another thing that people do, and that is to thread the tails of those threads underneath the tie downs. But uh, I've tried that in the past and uh, it just didn't look right. So. I, I don't do that either. Plus where it goes underneath the tie downs is again it produces a little bit of a bump and you want the, the spine to be as smooth as possible. So for the third demonstration I'll do the other end of the book uh, and I'm not going to spin it around a heap and it's going to be sped up a heap just to show how where I normally sit. Now the trick is to after you lock uh, the core in position is to take a needle and push the needle through the core into the shoulder of the book and it just locks everything in place and so that it doesn't flop around as much. Normally uh, I haven't found it help that much in the past when I've tried this but uh, it works so well that I'm going to use this trick more in the future. So that's the two color single core headband done. I do have a series of videos on the book that's used in the demonstration, the uh, laced in boards uh, with a hollow spine. So it's very much a 19th century um, English binding style. So I'm not sure when I'll publish those, probably maybe four weeks away. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have please hit the big thumbs up button and if you want to be notified of my future videos such as more headbands or uh, leather bound books then please hit the subscribe button and until next time cheerio.